Hi, I'm Emma Gannon. I'm a writer, I'm the author of six books, and I'm a coach. This Skillshare class is all about digital decluttering. I'm excited to share it with you because I think so many of us struggle with this and have so many unread emails and notifications. Today, I'm sharing an exclusive sneak peek with you, so stay tuned. Many of us are at the mercy of our feeds, at our notifications, at what is being sent to us. And really, this is going to be talking about doom scrolling and how to avoid that as well. In general, I think when we look at our lives and how we want them to be and we want to make more decisions, we think quite macro about really big things, really big decisions. But actually, the way that we spend our days is kind of the way we spend our whole lives. And this is all about being much more aware in your body and being more conscious of where your time is going. Something that I absolutely love is the Pocket app. So this is an app that helps you save things that you would love to read or news stories that you would love to dig into or long reads or even podcast episodes, things that maybe someone sends you, but you don't need to in that moment read it. Sometimes that is the biggest distraction is feeling like we have to do everything now. So this is a really a save for later kind of app. And for the past five plus years, I've actually rounded up lots of different reads and links and articles in my newsletter. And people always ask me how I have all the time to read all this stuff. And the secret is I don't, I don't read it all at once. I save it in the pocket app all through the week. And then maybe on a Friday afternoon or, you know, a relaxing kind of Sunday afternoon, I'll go into my pocket app and I will have a nice cup of tea and read through everything. One of the things I hear a lot with people who access my work is that they don't feel like they have enough time. This is a huge thing with people. We always feel like we don't have time. We always feel like we have to rush. And actually what's interesting about making sure that you do have boundary time with your phone and with the things that you're reading and those little things that take up all of your time, you find that actually at the end of the day, you do have more time because you have more of a control over it. This isn't about necessarily having the whole day to just sort of be at your leisure, like we all have to do things we don't want to do sometimes, but this is just about creating those smaller pockets. And, you know, I talk about this quite a lot, but I actually write my books in an hour a day. I don't need all day. I do other things in the day, um, but it's all about that concentrated time. Someone that has really inspired me when it comes to blocking off time is the author Oliver Berkman, who wrote the book 4,000 Weeks. And he talks a lot in his book around time and how a lot of it is around perception. So time, you know, is sort of moving at all times, but we can't really see it. It's not something that we can capture or put in a bag and save. It's always flowing. And therefore, we sometimes feel like we don't have a grasp on it. But he was saying that you can change your perspective with bulking your time so that even three or four hours of uninterrupted time can be absolutely life-changing. Even imagining not going on your phone for two or three hours probably seems quite alien to a lot of people because we're so used to checking it. But having that ring fence time of two or three hours, it is incredible. It feels like a very long amount of time because you're just in it. Deep work is something that's really hard to get into and we need all the help we can get. So I found that doing the deep work in the mornings really suited me because it meant that I could use up quite a lot of my energy in those two or three hours. And like I say, get so much done. It actually kind of blew my mind how much I could do in those two or three hours. I basically did sort of a day's worth of work, but just in that concentrated period of time. So the two or three hour rule is something that is exciting to do in the morning. And it's also great to do in the afternoon if you feel like you need to get something done. We all know that multitasking is the death of productivity. It really doesn't work. It's actually been proven to be impossible. When we think we're multitasking, we're actually just flitting between tasks just very, very quickly. If you feel like you need some inspiration on where you want to make some changes, it's good to go into your calendar or go into your phone and have a look at where you're spending your time. Because the phrase, I don't have time, it can really hold us back because it's a thought that we repeat so many times that we truly believe it. When actually we have an expanse of time, it just depends on what we're choosing and how we're handling our time. And we have so much power. We do have control. We do have choices. We can make better decisions. I'm definitely someone 
someone that gets distracted really easily, which is why I have learned all these tools to help me concentrate on the projects I want to work on. And the first one I do like is an app called Freedom, which is actually a desktop app that helps block any websites for a few hours. So back in the day, I would definitely block Twitter for the whole day because I wanted it to kind of be my treat at the end of the day because it was quite a fun place to hang out and talk to other writers. But I really needed to get a handle on not going on there all day because I needed to get my writing done. The other one similar to Freedom is an app called Self Control, which is really great as well because every time you go onto the website that you've blocked, it gives you kind of a prompt and a reminder to tell you why you've blocked it. There's also apps that have been designed to be really rewarding for how you're not using your phone. So for example, there's an app called Forest where the app basically has a tree and it's growing and you can look at your phone and see this tree growing with kind of things growing off it. And the whole point is you don't want to stop the tree from growing. Anytime that you go on your phone, the tree is sort of dies and you kind of want to keep growing it. So there's lots of apps out there, totally different to that one, where the whole point is how long can you stay off your phone? I think something that we forget as creative people, as writers, as people that make things, is we need time to breathe and think, but we also need time to look at things. I'm a really big reader and I get sent a lot of books, which makes me feel very, very lucky. And something that I really, I want to prioritize more in my life is reading. And I definitely notice that the more time I'm sucked into my phone and emails is just time taken away from reading. So for me, it's a real direct comparison. So if there's something that you really enjoy doing and you really want to make time for it, It's just really interesting to kind of even take note of how often you're doing it or when it's slipping away. So I know that when I'm not reading much, that is definitely a phone problem. And I will go back and do all of these things to rectify it. The other inspiration on this topic is Julia Cameron's The Artist Way. In that book, she really recommends a media break of all media, not just your phone, like TV, everything for a week or longer to see what comes up and what comes to the surface. And it's meant to be uncomfortable and it's meant to stretch you. And it's a really interesting experiment. If you're up for it, I really recommend that resource as well. So once you've given this a try and you've had a media break or you've really reduced your media consumption or you've even tried out the two or three hour rule, it's really important to have your journal because you're wanting to capture some of the emotions you feel or some of the sort of discomfort that's coming up. And this is really important part of the process so that you can really be aware of what's coming up for you. The first question to ask yourself really is just, do you have any withdrawal? And it's normal that you will, because if you're someone that's checking it very often or, you know, anything that you stop doing suddenly can feel a little bit strange. So this is just about being really honest with yourself, write down what you're missing, write down what you're worried about. I know that the first time I did this, I felt really worried that people might need to contact me, that there might be something really important. There might be this awful emergency and that during these three hours, something would have gone terribly wrong. And I think when you say that out loud, you realize that's probably slightly dramatic and that something probably hasn't gone wrong in three hours. So just writing things down can really take you out of your head. The second thing to ask yourself is, do you feel uncomfortable when you're not passively scrolling or using your phone in the same way? Sometimes we just pick up a phone because we don't really have anything else to do. It's kind of the same as smoking back in the day. It's just kind of a boredom thing and it's not really something that you're actively going on to do for any particular reason. So I would write a list of any of the discomfort you're feeling in your body. So it might be that you feel you know, a bit jittery, or you feel like you don't know really what to do with yourself, or you're just feeling a bit out of sorts. And I would try and really describe that in as much detail as possible. And when you look at it in the eye, you're more likely to overcome it than just sort of shove it to the side. The third thing to journal on is the question, do you feel compelled to move or relax your body? 
So in those moments of discomfort, as we just discussed, it's really important to move your body, to shake it out or do a bit of gentle yoga, spend five minutes stretching, literally anything, going for a small walk, going down the stairs, going into the kitchen, anything to just do something to shift your energy rather than just scrolling on your phone, because we forget that we can't really think our way out of discomfort. Sometimes we have to kind of move our way out of it. So just try this out. It's a really interesting one because it amazes me every time that it can only take five minutes of movement to set yourself back on the right track again. So in my office, I have my desk and I have a big bookcase, but I also have a yoga mat. I've also got this sort of neck, um, brace thing that you kind of put under your neck to kind of stretch it out on the floor. I also have a mat uh, that's an acupressure mat with sort of small little plastic spikes on it. Um, You can get different ones, but it's a really amazing way of getting rid of tension and sort of having a bit of a release. And again, it takes like five minutes. This isn't something you have to dedicate loads and loads of time to. You can live your life as normal, but it's just having these blocks of time where you know you're checking in with yourself. And the more you do, the more you'll want to do. Nowadays, I don't go really very far, very long at all before checking in with how I'm feeling and how I'm doing, which is something I probably didn't do very much in my 20s. So make some time over the next few days, weeks, months to try out some of these tools, try reducing your media consumption and using these journal prompts and see what comes up for you. Join my class on Skillshare to learn how to digital declutter your desktop, your phone, get rid of unwanted apps, streamline your emails and so much more. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.